So for this problem, we have air. It enters a compressor operating at steady state at a pressure of 100 kPa and a temperature of 27 C and exits the compressor at 127 C, so 100 degrees C increase. Stray heat transfer and kinetic potential energy effects are negligible. The air behaves as an ideal gas and then determine the maximum theoretical pressure at the exit. So we have a compressor, we have inlet, uh, we can put the exit over here, put in this work. Its work is going to be a negative work. Um, let's just leave that off for now. So inlet state one, exit state two. This is the work out of the compressor, which is negative. And we're given the information. Okay, so let's go ahead and organize it. So P1 is 100 kPa. And we're asked to solve for P2 which is really the mi maximum pressure, not minimum, maximum pressure. Whenever you see this maximum or minimum, it's really pushing the limits of the second law. So theoretically, if you want a maximum exit pressure, you would think about having a sigma dot equal to zero in the second law of thermodynamics. Okay, likewise, they could have asked for a minimum theoretical exit temperature if they would have given instead of the exit temperature, the exit pressure. But they gave the exit temperature and asked for a maximum theoretical pressure. Okay, uh, our temperature in is 27 degrees C. Let's convert that right away to 300 Kelvin. And the temperature exit is 127 degrees C, convert it right away to 400 Kelvin. So we know our two temperatures in and out. We know our inlet pressure. We're asked for the uh, maximum theoretical pressure. There is no indication to how to treat the air, like very constant specific heats or variable specific heats. So what we're going to do is we're going to pick variable specific heats meaning we're going to use the table in our textbook A22 to look up properties for air as a function of temperature. Okay, so if you look at this, um, maybe we put it on a, a Mollier diagram, an enthalpy, entropy diagram, we have a line of constant pressure, P1, a line of constant pressure, P2, and we have a low uh, um, S, and a low H, and there's state 1. And as we think about compressing it, if we would compress it isentropically to state 2S, we'd have the low H. Okay, <clears throat> if you um, try to um, also lines of constant temperature when you have an ideal gas, they're the same as constant H. Um, so a line of constant temperature would look like this. So if we're trying to go from uh, 300 Kelvin and you know that it's 400 Kelvin, if you went anywhere out here such that there was an increase in entropy the S on the exit would be larger than the S on the inlet, then you can see that you would not achieve such a high pressure. It would be a lower pressure line, a lower pressure line, a lower pressure line. And this P2 right here is the highest pressure. Well, what about if I don't go on a, uh, uh, to the right of S2, but if I go to the left of S2, what happens if I would think, oh, maybe I can go to here, here, and it'd be compressing that way, compressing that way. Well, you're, you're not gonna be able to, from the second law to get S2 less. The lowest that S2 can be would be S1. So the, unless you have heat transfer, but they say that there's no heat transfer, negligible amount of heat transfer from this compressor. So uh, Q dot uh, is equal to zero for this compressor, or you can just say it's insulated. So it's not applicable there. So to get the calculate the maximum, you would assume the minimum um, entropy generation or zero 
So from the second law, we have that um, S2 is equal to S1 plus uh, sigma dot divided by M dot. And so we're going to assume that's equal to zero. So S1 is equal to S2, straight line up. And how do I calculate the change in the entropy? Well, we would use an equation and using uh, accounting for temperature dependent properties, it would be S2 naught minus S1 naught minus R natural log of P2 over P1. And this must equal to zero to get the maximum theoretical pressure. And so this is, I'm just rewriting this for clarity, natural log of P2 over P1. Okay, so we take a look and we say, we're trying to find the max pressure. Maybe I extend the subscripts on that. And we're given our two temperatures so we can evaluate the temp the S naught at two that only depends on T2 and the S naught at one only depends at T1. And we're given the inlet pressure. So we just solve this equation, assuming the change in S equal to zero for P2. So P2 max would be equal to P1 times the exponential of the S2 uh, naught minus S1 naught divided by R. Okay, so how do I get the S2s and S1s? Well, we go to table A22, and this would be T1 right there. And so this right here is S naught at 1. And this is S naught at 2. And the units on these are kilojoules per kilogram Kelvin. They're included in the header of the table over here, but it's been truncated off. Likewise, the units here are Kelvin, etc. So these are the two values that we need. So we bring them back and we find P2 max is equal to our inlet pressure, 100 kPa, times the exponential of the difference, the difference being 1.99194 minus 1.70203. Let's take a look back here again. 1.99194, 1.70203, that works. And then we have the gas constant, R. Uh, I like to just put it as 8.314 divided by the molar mass of air, 28.97. There you go. So when we calculate P2 max, it comes in at 270... 274.6 kPa, we'll put it to three significant digits, 275 kPa. That is our maximum theoretical exit pressure. All right, that ends that problem.